What does quality of life for people with dementia consist in? What is sort of the essence? I would say that, <clears throat> first of all, quality of life is a concept that's in meaning different for person to person, for every one of us. But core aspects of life that most people would mention are, of course, social relationships, feeling good, enjoying life, living a good life, enjoying meals, presence, company of people you love, know you care for, wanting to feel, to belong to a place where you live, that you make part of the environment, part of society. Things like that are really meaningful for most people and therefore for people with dementia just as well. So that's, I think, what really we should focus on. When we speak of dementia, we do realise um, that people lose a lot of abilities so that they need assistance in finding the good things of life and still enjoying the good things of life. That's what we should focus on, I think. Is there any specific aspect of quality of life from people with dementia which is specific for them, which, where people with dementia and people without dementia would differ? Well, in essence, I would, I would call it secure, the sense of security, the need mm -hmm. for security. Not because we do not need it, but because the world is a threatening world when you lose your cognitive function. When the world is becoming more and more complex and you don't understand what's happening to you anymore. You can't remember things. You lose your way. When you are used to walking in your hometown, and suddenly, for the first time in your life, you realise that you've lost your way. That's a frightening experience. Mm -hmm. So yes, the sense of security is a very important one. It comes back in all aspects of life, actually, for a person with dementia. What does that imply then for the design of environment and maybe also for the design of caring relationships? How can we transport that or support that feeling of security? I think that when you design an environment for people with dementia to live in, it should provide a sense of feeling at home for them. It should be something they can recognize as home-like, natural surroundings. Like this morning I spoke about the difference between traditional nursing homes and more or less an ordinary house where you used to live in. A nursing home is not designed as an ordinary home. Mm -hmm. You don't recognize it as a home, you have difficulty finding your way. And that gives a, feel, a sense of insecurity even stronger because it puts you into a world where you don't recognize anything as normal anymore. If someone tells you that the space where 20 people sit at tables and chairs is a living room, it, it really appalls me, but I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So that's a frightening one. So yes, environment does help. And the essence, I think, in supporting people with dementia by professional carers, nurses, psychologists, doctors, physiotherapists, name them, is that they listen to people with dementia, try to understand their needs, try to understand why they might feel insecure, mm -hmm. or why they are frightened or disoriented, so try to look for that and be prepared to really enter a relationship. Mm -hmm. If you care for someone with dementia on a, in a specific setting, you enter a relationship that will last probably up to the final days of the life of this person. So it's more than just a client or patient professional relation, it's a relation between two people. With one aspect still, is that the people with dementia are dependent on you for caring and for helping to organize their lives. So there's an inequality within this relationship and you have to be aware of that. But entering a relationship, making true and interesting contact with the person with dementia is, I think, the basis. Bring yourself, bring you, your own personality, 
into this relationship. That's why, for instance, I might get along very well with the one person on the board, but not so good with someone else. Mm -hmm. But then again, my comment might be, get along very well with that person, acknowledge the fact that you cannot care for everybody in the same way, the same fashion. Mm -hmm. um, that brings me to another point. Could you, I mean, very often you have challenging nursing situations which are difficult to master. And the person doesn't understand the situation and doesn't understand what the nurse um, intends to do. Um, could you maybe give an example of a good emotion orientated work, of a good way to relate as a nurse to a situation which uh, may be perceived as challenging? There's quite a few situations which are challenging for nurses. I've, I know from my own experience. And I think that the best, uh, the first advice I would give to a nurse is walk away for mm -hmm. a moment. Count to ten and start thinking instead of reacting. Mm -hmm. And then again, in that same moment, you can't do all that much because you might be on your own. So you have to figure a way out. But then I would give you advice. Talk with your colleagues about it. Set up some sort of meeting. Do it regularly in which you discuss the case, perhaps assisted by a psychologist, as a support for your attitude and trying to find out the answer behind the question. Why does someone behave like that in the situation? Does it always happen with you or with all of us? And then what is the reason? I heard a story not just long ago. But a man who detested being uh, assisted in a shower, and was always, and the nurses would get more wet than the man himself. That was a lot of trouble. Now, one of the days, a nurse brought her young baby on the board, mm -hmm. and this man relaxed. He suddenly, oh, he was in trance almost, like he thought it, thought it beautiful. And one of the nurses got the idea. Said, I make, we use an apron in, in the shower mm -hmm. to protect our clothes and to get it warm. And I go to a print shop and print a photograph of a baby ah, on this apron. Okay. And the trouble. And it worked. It worked. I mean, it's not something that you can take off the shelf and use in every situation, but it's actually observing and what does this man react to? Mm -hmm. So this is a good clue, a good cue for this man to elicit behavior, to, to get behavior from him that we like to help him with. And he was happily underneath the shower looking at a picture of a baby. Mm -hmm. It's a simple experience, or a simple example. And sometimes things can be so simple. Well, thank you very much. Maybe a, a, a final um, aspect. Uh, very often uh, we observe that people with dementia in a very late stage um, have not very much contacts, are very often alone, get basic care only. Uh, do you have an idea how you can improve the quality of life of people who are sort of bedridden or in a very late stage of their disease? First thing is that the nurse helping them should be sensitive to the, the, the physical uh, cues that those people are giving, the tension in muscles, the groan, groaning or moaning and those sort of signals. And I also firmly believe that those people can enjoy in a passive way the uh, daily routine mm -hmm. with other people. Also an environment still with enough stimuli, music, things that are happening, mm -hmm. kitchen noises, just the daily routine of ordinary life. I think that would, does make a difference in okay. the situation. So thank you very much for this interview. You're welcome. I see.